Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com and I have done it. I've successfully completed the two week iPhone 6 Plus challenge. I left my SIM card in this device for two weeks, used it as my daily driver every single day was using this device. And I gotta say, I did learn a lot. It's about Apple, iOS, iPhones in general, just learned a lot. I hope you guys did too watching my, uh, my videos, my check-in videos. Hope you guys enjoyed those. If you didn't see them, I'll link to them in the description of the video. But anyways, like I said, I learned a lot. Um, I'm not gonna be done with these videos. I'm still gonna do a Siri versus Google Google Now video and also an Android versus iOS video, so stay tuned for those. Subscribe if you have not. But also, I want to say thank you so much for the support. You guys uh, have given me lots of thumbs up, lots of comments, everything. I just really see, love the support that you guys are giving me. I've gotten a lot of good comments as well. Uh, it seems like you guys are enjoying my review of this device. Just, I, I tried to do it come from a perspective of someone that just loves technology and loves trying out new things. Uh, so, I mean, it's really great to see your feedback. So, if you want to leave feedback on this video as well. But, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I want to do. Uh, I actually want to go ahead and do a drop test with this iPhone. Are right, you recording? Yeah. All right, on three. One, two. All right, I'm totally kidding. I did not do a drop test, as you can see full working condition iPhone. Sorry, Dana, hopefully I freaked you out with that. But anyways, in honor of the two week challenge completing, I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the SIM card. So there we go. I just took it out. You'll see no SIM installed. So there we go. I can actually put this in any device I want now that the challenge is over and I've completed it. Uh, and actually, we'll see if I, I might actually put it back in an iPhone. We'll see in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and do a full review of the iPhone 6 Plus now, let you know if I'm actually going to switch to iPhone from Android. All right, so let's first go ahead and talk about hardware and design of the iPhone 6 Plus made by Apple. Uh, so right away, first thing I did notice about it was how thin it was. So Apple did a very good job at designing a phone that was very thin, very sleek, uh, all aluminum, of course, all around it. Uh, it's kind of slippery though, so take note of that. It does kind of feel very slippery in your hands. So you might want to throw a case on it to make sure you don't drop it. Uh, anyways, on the back, you do have an eight megapixel camera. I'll get to that in just a second. You have an LED flash. Um, on the one side, on your left side, you ha do have volume rockers. You also have a silent toggle. So something that I was new to, um, you flip it this way for silent mode and this way for not silent mode, essentially. It will still vibrate even if you have silent mode on it, if you have that app notification set to specifically vibrate. And then on the right side, you do have a SIM slot and then just the power button. Up at the top, you have absolutely nothing. And down at the bottom, you do have a lightning cable uh, charging port and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is great to have on the bottom, at least in my opinion. And then you have the speaker grill right here. With a single speaker grill, I don't really like on the bottom. I'd rather have it on the front, of course. Um, it does get very loud, however, so it has a very good, uh, I guess it gets loud. It's not necessarily great quality, but it does get very loud. I did notice that. Um, it's hard when you're watching a video or something, you kind of want to cup your hand so the sound goes towards you. It's hard to not block the speaker as well if you're holding it horizontally playing a game or something. But that's just, uh, I guess, personal experience out of it. Now, what's great about the light cable you'll see I have here is I don't even have to think about it on which direction I need to plug it in. I can flip it back and forth and both ways it can connect to it. Something I hope comes to Android devices soon, just a uh, connector that you can connect both ways. Now to add a couple things about the hardware, there's a couple specs I wanted you to make note of. First of all, it has a dual core 1.4 gigahertz A8 processor and also one gigabytes of RAM. Now, uh, if you have a flagship device with Android, you might be used to three gigabytes of RAM. You might be used to a quad core or maybe even an octa core processor. This only has a dual core, one gigabyte of RAM. However, even with that, it runs very smoothly. So multitasking is very smooth. Opening apps does not take long at all. You'll see running through, opening the camera application, everything like that. It's very smooth, very fluid. And that's with one gig of RAM and a dual core processor. Now what that goes to show you is they have really optimized the software for the hardware. And that's a great thing. This is uh, Google needs to take note about this with Android is they really need to work on optimizing um, their software to work well with their hardware. Now to give you an idea of the screen, the screen's very good. It's a 1080p display, a 5.5 inch display. It's an IPS display as well and it's, it's really nice. Honestly, you'll see I have a 4K video streaming from YouTube as you can see a Panasonic uh, video. But you'll see it looks really great. The colors look great as well. Uh, whether I'm watching a video, playing a game, just looking at pictures, anything in general just looks really good on the screen. So overall a very good screen. They did well with the hardware on the screen as well. 
All right, a couple things I wanna talk about real quick because I already covered them extensively in another video, so I'll link to that. I'll link to all the previous videos in the description is camera and battery life. First of all, battery life is great. Easily gets me through an entire day. Uh, you don't have to worry about it running out of battery, anything like that. And then also the camera. It's an eight megapixel camera. It has optical image stabilization. Don't let the eight megapixels turn you off. It focuses quickly. Um, it takes really great pictures. Trust me, uh, it's amazing. Sh shutter lag's very low. It takes, honestly, the best low light pictures I've seen out of any phone that I have right now so low light pictures are great uh, just pictures in general are very good as well all right now I want to switch over to software a little bit more uh, first of all I guess still kind of hardware is the fingerprint scanner on the home button uh, which I use you'll see I swipe over and ask for a touch ID or passcode I just can just press and hold my thumb or my pointer finger I think up to five fingers on this and it unlocks it right away it works how it should which is why I like it so much it's really great when I download apps or make purchases is I can just go ahead and put my finger on there it scans it and knows it's mine and it works really well now with the 6 plus you get uh, I guess apps working in landscape mode even things on the home button I mean on the home page uh, you'll see that app screen for some reason I don't know if this does this on the 6 but you'll see the home screen rotates all the way upside down for no apparent reason especially because other most apps except for the settings app actually won't go right side up You'll see the settings apps working right here. Let's say I go into something such as the dialer. It's not going to work. It's going to look upside down no matter what. So it's pretty much pointless to have it upside down. I don't know why they let the home screen orientation go that way. Now, one amazing feature about iPhones, and I really, really commend Apple for including this, is called iMessage. If you're not familiar with iMessage, essentially it'll send text messages over your data network. So Wi-Fi, 4G, 3G, etc. And what it does is it uses your phone number your whatever stock phone number you have and you can use it to send messages on iPhone, iPad or iPod Touch to other users of Apple products. You can use iMessage to do so. Now Google really t needs to take note about this because obviously you can use your Google Voice number and send messages but you can't use your actual phone number and send it on your, I mean I believe you can do it on your MacBook as well. So I mean if you can seamlessly switch between your tablet, your laptop, your iPod Touch, your media player, anything like that and send text messages over Wi-Fi. That's really a great feature and something Google really needs to get on and I guess integrate into Hangouts or another application. Going along with that, the FaceTime app is very good. It's very simple. It's very simplistic. You open it up, you can just you can flip the camera, you can end the call. That's pretty much it. Mute the mic and that's it. It's very simple and it, but it works how it should. Uh, obviously it's only between other people in the Apple ecosystem but they've done such a good job with that app. It really works seamlessly. A lot of people People like it and it's integrated in the OS so if you go to your contacts you can see if you can actually FaceTime them instead of phone calling them now something else that I really like is uh, I showed it earlier the multitasking window one reason I like it so much is just because uh, it's very fluid you'll see but also multitasking in general is fluid you can uh, swipe from the apps up here or you can swipe from the app icons down here if you want to swipe a little bit quicker you'll also notice your recent contacts up here which is great if you tap on one of them it'll bring up an option you'll see FaceTime message mobile or FaceTime call uh, it gives you a bunch of options a really cool just recent running app screen and I really like it personally now one thing I kind of don't like is a notification system uh, if I get a notification with my screen off it'll show up on my lock screen let's say I have multiple ones on my lock screen though if I go ahead and open a text message but I also have a snapchat and an email if I open the text message unlock my device uh, it'll go to that text message but then if I go back to my locks if I close out of my phone if I go back to that lock screen those notifications don't stay there they aren't persistent once you unlock your phone they all disappear so then you have to go back to your notification panel right here and then it'll show it um, some within some apps notifications don't go away after you've read them I know hangouts it doesn't work some of my emails it doesn't work um, it's kind of a pain I find myself not really wanting to pull down the notification bar very much on this device um, just because there's always so much clutter um, when I get a bunch of emails they all just take up the entire space uh, another thing is there's no notification icon so I don't know exactly what notifications are in the notification panel unless I pull them down so notification icons would be a nice touch now speaking of the pull down bar so you'll see notifications here you have the today one which is I guess uh, Apple's version of widgets uh, you can customize them as well you see calendar no events uh, it lets you know the weather the date give you some stock information and you can also add other applications if they integrate it the developer integrates it into their app you'll see the sports center app right there you can hit edit remove if you don't use the stocks you can hit edit and remove them 
all that good stuff. So I find myself not using it too much just because I'm more so wanting to go to notifications, if anything. Um, they kind of, I wish they could just have this maybe as widgets on the home screen. Obviously, uh, they don't have that. But anyways, you have a pull up bar as well. The control center is what I've learned it was called, uh, which is nice. I honestly really like that. I wish Google would do that where the pull up is maybe quick toggles, media control, all of that stuff and pull down as notifications. I wish they would do that. Um, I actually really like having this control center here. However, I wish there was a way to get into the settings app from the control center. There's not, unfortunately, because for specific apps, if I wanna to go to the dialer, if I wanna go into the settings of the dialer, if I wanna change any settings, just for example, I can't just swipe up and say settings or there's no settings button within the apps. You have to specific, you have to actually go into the settings and go scroll all the way down and here's all of the apps and then you have to go into here to go to those app settings. But there's no way to quickly do it without going back to the home screen, back to the settings app and then going into it. It's kind of a pain. But anyways, back to the pull up bar, the control center, there's quick toggles for a flashlight, uh, timer, calculator, calculator, uh, camera, and they open up very quickly. Uh, so if I swipe up again, and I wanna go to the calculator, you'll see I haven't opened up the calculator in a while, and it opens up very smoothly, very seamlessly. You can swipe up from almost anywhere and access this. You have uh, nighttime mode, airplane mode, Bluetooth, toggle. There's no way to customize these either. I wish more customizations were available. And also going through, I do really miss a back button. I really wish Apple would have included that. However, I mean, they do in some apps. You'll see if I go here and I go to general, I can swipe from the left, and it'll go back, but it only works in certain apps. It doesn't work in all of them. Uh, I know a lot of people keep saying that, hey, you can just swipe from the left, but no, I can't because it doesn't always work. If ads pop up, you're gonna need to press a little X in the top corner, something like that, or any back button. You see a back button shows up in the upper left-hand corner here. You can always swipe back. Um, it's a pain, and I really think Apple really needs to either integrate an, a universal swipe from the left to go back or a button uh, specifically dedicated to go back. Now overall their home screen, it's very simple, reliant on apps. I mean, you only have app icons. Also with all these app icons, you're forced to kind of make folders. So you'll see I have a Google folder right here. Coming from Android, I use a lot of Google apps. Uh, however, when I open a folder, I kind of wish it would still show those dock icons. Um, just in case I wanted to go to one of them instead. And also, if I go into one of these folders and then I go into one of these apps and I press the home button, it for some reason takes me back to that folder. I've never, I've yet to see a reason to actually need that. Usually when I press the home button, I wanna go back to the home screen. So if I press the home button, it takes me back to that folder. I press the home button again, it takes me back to this screen. If I pr press the home button again, it'll actually take me into my home screen. So kind of a pain there. I don't understand why they feel the need to actually go back uh, into the folder. Also, like I said, no app icons down at the bottom while in a folder. Anyways, and finally, real quick, I want to talk about the App Store. Just want to touch on it real quick. At this point in time, essentially the App Store and the Google Play Store have very similar apps. I mean, app developers are going to develop for both iOS and Android at this point in time. The amount of apps they have are very similar. Uh, you're going to get all the popular apps on both of them. I mean, they're the two most popular phones out right now. Uh, you have top charts here where you can go top grossing, free and paid, explore, you can just explore all these different categories of things you like. You have a search and then you have updates for specific apps that you already have. Uh, now also if you do want to use your computer to look for apps, you have to go to iTunes to do so instead of something within a web client such as Chrome or any web browser in general which you do on Google Play. So it's just a little bit different. I'm not too big of a fan of using iTunes for it. However, iTunes is nice because I use iTunes for my music management I guess in a sense and it's really easy to sync back and forth between your phone and iTunes. I'd like to see Google maybe use some sort of music client, Google Play music client like iTunes as well. Um, maybe not necessarily to install apps but to sync music. That'd be kind of nice. So it's really nice to sync music on your device. All right, so let's wrap this two week challenge up. Want to give some final thoughts. Overall, like I said, great hardware in the iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, build quality in general. Uh, you have the screen, a great screen. You have great battery. A camera, of course. The camera's fantastic. And they also have the great software optimization. So their software is optimized for their specific devices and it runs fluid, runs smooth. Now with that software optimization, you get more of a simple software, I guess. Um, you can't necessarily make those changes to the software, as I mentioned, um, that, that Android does allow. However, with the more simpler software, allows for better battery life, uh, better in, uh, integration with that hardware. Like I said, it has um, 
not as good hardware as some Android devices. However, it does sometimes run smoother than other Android devices just because it has that optimization with the software. You can run it with one gigs of RAM, a dual core processor. And anyways, to wrap things up, I'm not gonna be putting my SIM card back into the iPhone 6 Plus. I'm actually gonna put it into another Android device. I'm gonna keep doing Android videos, I'm gonna keep reviewing Android phones. Uh, like I said, I'll do a couple more after this, a couple more iPhone videos just comparing Android and iOS. So you got that, but overall I just really missed Google. Um, Google Now is something I missed as well. Uh, and just kind of, you get kind of bored with the software, the simplicity of it. Uh, like I said, I can really appreciate what Apple's done with the iPhone and iOS as well. iMessage was something that's really cool that Google needs to take suit on. And other things as well. Uh, I mean, they really need to learn to optimize their software for their hardware. So like I said, overall, um, hopefully you enjoyed these videos. Uh, I know I enjoyed making them. Hopefully you guys learned something, got some benefit out of it. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Excited to put my SIM card in another Android device and use that. Tell you guys all about it, everything like that. So lots more videos to come. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links in the description of the video below. As always, guys, thank you for watching.